Hello, welcome. Thank Would you, you mind introducing yourself, Alida? My name is Alida Thumb. I'm a communications and marketing officer at UNESCO IHE, Institute for Water Education in Delft, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And today you're going to talk to us about the importance of how to educate um, people who will be ready to work as water professionals. Yes, um, maybe you're not aware of what UNESCO IHE does. Mm -hmm. Postgraduate Education Institute. We do a lot of research and capacity development projects, also related to uh, integrated water management mm -hmm. as well. As um, we have uh, research, but we also do a lot of masters and PhD uh, programs, and we have online courses, short courses, tailor-made trainings in various areas. And how many um, people? How many students do you have, or can you can you have? Well, we have currently around 130 PhD uh, fellows working um, with us on various topics related to water. Um, but in addition, we have 200, around 200 each year Masters of Science, and we have a lot of yeah, other uh, course participants. Mm -hmm. And I think what is important is that at UNESCO IHE, people from various countries around the world, they come to um, further their capacities in these areas mm -hmm. and they also uh, are being trained in a more multidisciplinary way which is I think nice that they can also develop their competences mm -hmm. to um, be able to integrate in various areas. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it's important to move beyond just the scientific Yes, aspect. because I think um, the traditional way water managers or water engineers would approach certain issues would just be very technical perhaps. But now I think also um, more importantly is that you can work together uh, with also scientists but also the social scientists and also um, practitioners mm -hmm. but also government, government agency, agencies yeah. and also media professionals being able to communicate the message, do some mm -hmm. advocacy, awareness raising, campaigns maybe. Uh, yeah. And um, does UNESCO have a specific outlook for the next, um, I guess, maybe half a century with goals and plans that you would like to achieve? Well, we are noticing that we're really, um, we need to expand our reach to also reach people who are otherwise not being reached because we see that from the 1200 MSC applications that we receive every year, we can admit only around 200 not only because we have limited capacities, but also limited funding um, in order to um, to accommodate those needs, I think we can really enlarge the scope by creating global campuses around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and where are many of the students from, or where would you like to expand? Well, we have students from all over the world, so I think if we could have uh, UNESCO-IGE Asia, UNESCO-IGE Latin America, UNESCO-IGE Africa, then I think you know at least we would be able to and of have such sister agencies around the world in which you can coordinate and you can network, you can uh, diversify your funding base and I think in, yeah, to that extent it's really necessary to do that in order to also meet the MDGs and other targets because it's really important that people develop their capacities but also thereby um, benefiting from the culture that they yeah. are from and also from the context, the network they have. Mm. I think uh, people who are more aware of um, these issues, but also because they can interchange and exchange knowledge and information with other colleagues from around the world, you can see this cooperation develop uh, better. Yeah. Thank you for sharing.